Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. And today's topic is uh, uh, rhabdomyolysis, uh, you know. Uh, but before starting this topic, I would like to request you to like, subscribe and share these videos to support this channel. And if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition, uh, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com, you know. And the, click for, uh, sorry, the link for the website is just below this video. So you can click that link to visit the website. And we come to the topic. Uh, you know, rhabdomyolysis uh, is uh, the breakdown of the damaged uh, skeletal muscles, you know. And the muscle breakdown causes the release of uh, myoglobin in the bloodstream. And uh, myoglobin uh, is, uh, is protein, you know. And its function is that it stores oxygen in your muscles. You know. And if you have too much uh, myoglobin in your blood, it can cause uh, the complications like uh, kidney damage, you know. And uh, the most people with this condition are treated with the fluids given uh, through their veins uh, in an intravenous drip, you know. And the, some people may require maybe dialysis or maybe hemofiltration to address the kidney damage in more severe cases, you know. And the initial symptoms uh, can be like uh, subtle, you know, which means they are not specific and uh, may mimic with other conditions, you know. And if there are symptoms, they may include like uh, muscle weakness, uh, lower urine output, fatigue, weakness, soreness, maybe bruising, you know. Uh, tea colored urine you know or dark colored urine you know uh, infrequent urination fever uh, like uh, sense of like feeling sick you know and maybe confusion agitation vomiting and nausea you know so these are the common symptoms uh, it's always triggered by the muscle injury and the injury can have the physical uh, chemical and uh, genetic causes, you know, and uh, anything that damages the muscles can cause this condition. And the possible uh, causes include maybe trauma or maybe heat or maybe exertion, you know, and uh, maybe genetic and metabolic disorders and maybe uh, like infections and inflammation, you know, like uh, viral infections or bacterial infections, you know, and with the medications and uh, toxins as well. Uh, and there are many other potential causes uh, exist in the, uh, the other than these uh, the four categories I told you, you know. And the next thing is how do doctors diagnose that uh, someone is suffering with the uh, rhabdomyolysis, you know. Well, your doctor will uh, look and feel the like uh, larger skeletal muscles in your body and especially uh, the oic to check the like tenderness you know and they may also perform the urine and the blood test to confirm the diagnosis of uh, rhabdomyolysis you know and uh, the test to determine the muscle and the kidney health may include like the levels of uh, uh, creatine kinase you know or maybe the myoglobin in the blood and maybe the potassium, you know, and uh, uh, creatinine in the blood urine, you know, uh, in the blood and urine, you know. And uh, so these are the tests your doctor will order to confirm the diagnosis. And the elevated levels of these uh, are the signs of muscle damage, you know. Uh, once diagnosed and the treatment, uh, uh, it can be treated successfully. Uh, without any long-term damage to the kidneys if it's diagnosed, you know. And uh, the treatment options may include like the fluid recovery or medications and uh, dialysis and the home remedies, you know. Uh, fluid recovery means that uh, getting enough fluid into your body in the first and the most important treatment, you know, and uh, uh, they must start like the IV fluids, you know. Uh, and the fluid should contain bicarbonates, which helps to flush the myoglobin out of your kidneys, you know. 
and the medications uh, uh, like uh, uh, bicarbonates and certain kinds of the diuretics to help your kidney functioning properly you know. and they can also treat with the high potassium levels in the blood or hyperkalemia and uh, low blood calcium levels and uh, hypocalcemia with the appropriate IV fluids you know. and dialysis is another option you know just to clean the uh, blood you know uh, with the machines you know and uh, in mild cases uh, uh, the home treatment can also help to aid the recovery and the goal of the treatment include like resting the body so muscles can recover and uh, rehydration to help the further kidney damage you know and uh, when you are feeling fatigued uh, recline in a comfortable position and try to relax you know drink plenty of fluids uh, to clear the liquids and such as uh, uh, sports drinks etc you know well the long term outlook depends on the degree of the kidney damage and if uh, it's caught early you may be able to avoid any major complications and uh, return to the normal health in a couple of weeks you know and uh, uh, if the major kidney damage occurs your kidneys may be permanently damaged mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the several of the symptoms and the complications are serious and may result in death if you don't get the treatment uh, properly you know well you can prevent this condition by drinking plenty of fluids before and after the serious exercise and uh, this will dilute your urine and help your kidneys to eliminate any uh, myoglobin and your muscles may have released during the exercise you know and if you have any like a uh, existing degenerative muscle condition or have any sustained damage to your muscles after any trauma you know uh, you can prevent uh, this by staying well hydrated all the times you know and uh, carry a full refillable water bottle with you all the time so you can make sure that uh, you are drinking plenty of water you know uh, thank you very much for watching this video if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com and please do not forget to like subscribe and share these videos to support this channel thank you and goodbye